What's up everyone, it's April and in today's video we're going to be talking about plugin actions for Microsoft Copilot Studio. So if you're looking to enhance your Copilot's capabilities, you're in the right place. We'll talk about what plugin actions are, how you use them, and we'll see an example of how they work. So let's get started. So before we dive into plugin actions and what they are, let's get one thing out of the way. What you formerly knew as Power Virtual Agents inside of the Power Platform is now Microsoft Copilot Studio. But this isn't simply just a renaming or rebranding of Power Virtual Agents. It's an entirely new product. You have all the capabilities and features of Power Virtual Agents inside of Microsoft Copilot Studio, but now it has even more generative AI capability that you can use not just inside of the Power Platform, but within Microsoft 365 Copilot as well. And among some of these new capabilities are plugin actions. Before we can really understand plugin actions, we need to understand what plugin actions are using. And that's something called generative actions. Generative actions are really a paradigm shift from moving off of the traditional natural language processing way of handling topics inside of your bot or now copilot into using generative AI to do that. So now instead with this new generative action approach, your Copilot in Microsoft Copilot Studio can actually use GPT to be able to dynamically choose the topic or the plugin action to best respond to your user's query. So going back to plugin actions, these use generative actions to be able to allow us to automatically respond to our user's request, or we can even call them explicitly with inside a topic. So some quick terminology here too with this change from Power Virtual Agents to Microsoft Copilot Studio, what you would have traditionally called a bot inside of Power Virtual Agents is now a copilot inside of Microsoft Copilot Studio. We still have topics we can define, but a lot of the power now inside of Microsoft Copilot Studio can be done through generative AI. There's a ton of new generative AI functionality inside of Microsoft Copilot Studio with plugin actions and generative actions being one of them. So we kind of get an idea of what a plugin action does, but what is it exactly? What is it behind the scenes? Well, any power platform connector that you have can now be enabled as a plugin action. So these include the pre-built connectors that we have for SharePoint, Excel, the weather connector, all those things can now be used as plugin actions inside of our co-pilots. And this also includes custom connectors that we create as well, which can be enabled as plugin actions. And beyond connectors, we can make Power Automate Cloudflow's plugin actions and bot framework skills. So we have four different ways that we can make these plugin actions to open up all kinds of possibilities for our copilots. And this is probably best explained by seeing it in action. So let's go over to Copilot Studio. It's on Microsoft.com. We'll create a brand new copilot and use a plugin action. So we'll go over to our homepage and we'll choose the create a copilot button. We'll give it a name here. Our copilots can speak multiple languages. So you can choose the drop down here to select the language that you want it to speak. I'm going to keep it on English. And another one of the things that you notice here is it supports the ability to put in a website to associate your copilot to, and it can use the power of generative AI to dynamically get information from that site to respond to requests. So maybe I want this particular copilot to do a ton of different things, including telling me information about different Lego sets because I love Lego. So I'm going to copy the Lego URL here and we'll paste that in. And with this simple action here, now the copilot will have all the knowledge of the Lego site. Now we'll click create. So that didn't take too long at all to set up. And now just by me providing that URL, I could actually already start asking my copilot questions. So I could ask it something like, is there a Pac-Man Lego set? And there you go. It was able to get that information from that website using generative AI with links back to where it got the information from. So it can make sure it's not just making it up. I might actually have to buy this one. This looks pretty cool. So I just tested my copilot and you'll notice on the left hand side, we have topics and plugins. So we still do have the ability to create custom topics like we did in Power Virtual Agents for whatever we want. So you'll see that we have some greeting topics and we have lesson topics in here and we can create our own custom ones as well. But we can now build a copilot without really having to define any topics if we don't need to. So as we just saw with providing that website in there, we're able to get a lot of questions answered that way. 
and it actually supports up to four websites. So we can go over here to the generative AI section in a left-hand menu. And this is where we can add additional websites to give that context to our copilot to pull answers from. And beyond websites, we can even upload documents up to three megabytes to be able to feed to our copilot as well. But what if there's information with a custom connector or a power platform connector that we want to get in our copilot to not only return information, but maybe even perform some actions for us? Well, that's where we want to use plugin actions. So in this generative AI section here, we need to go here first before we can start using generative actions and plugin actions. There's some settings that we need to enable. So if we scroll down to the bottom of this page, You'll want to make sure that generative answers is enabled, which it is, but also if we want to use plugin actions to enable this dynamic chaining with generative action setting. So this will make sure that we're able to do everything that we need to do. And when you enable or disable any of these settings, you want to make sure to save it up here in the left hand side to apply that for your copilot. Now that we've did that, we can start testing some plugin actions. When it gets to plugin actions, you're going to go to your topics and plugin section here. And we'll see we have a section now dedicated to plugin actions. So if you have any actions that you built, those will show right here. And this is also where we can go to add a new one. Now this is in preview still, so keep that in mind as you test this out. So if I go click the add a plugin action here, you'll see we have this screen where we need to select the plugin that we want to add. So this is surfacing up some of those pre-built Power Platform connectors to give us some ideas of different actions and things that we can do. So lots of Excel things here. We can have it run a script directly from our copilot. We can do things like get the weather forecast. This is a really cool and quick and easy one to demo. So let's actually walk through this one right now just so we can see what a plugin action does. So if I wanted my bot to be able to go and get the weather for me, we can simply add the MSN weather connector in this get forecast for today action. So we can select that. It's going to have us authenticate into the connector. So you see it's loading that up. There's the connection that we have for that connector and we can confirm that and we can click next. And this is where we just review and finish the plugin because it's essentially taking this Power Platform connector and making it a plugin for Copilot Studio. It automatically gets information from the connector and passes it to the plugin. So things like the plugin action name, this is the get forecast for today, the model description. And then we have some settings we can configure here, whether or not we want to ask the user before running this action. So by default for this connector, it's set to no, but if we wanted to change anything, we can click edit and all of these become editable and we can check that if we wanted to put a message to the user asking them if they want to run this action. Now for something like this, where we're just returning data from a weather connector, that's really overkill, but maybe if you're returning sensitive data or you're performing some kind of action that you want to verify, this would be a setting that you might want to enable. I'm going to leave that off for this though, and we'll go back. Now the other section that you'll see here when you are creating a plugin action is inputs and then outputs. These are important for your plugin and how you want it to function. So each connector that you have will have different inputs and outputs. For this MSN weather, get the current weather, it's going to ask for a user's location and for the units to return the weather in. So that's the information that that connector needs to be able to return data to the user. And with each of these inputs, we have properties we can define. So we can go to edit here and we can customize each of these different inputs as we want. So we can have this input be dynamically filled and that's the default option here, or we can hard code a value as well. So for location, we'd want that to be dynamic. We'd want to be able to get the location that the user wants the weather for. But for something like units, if we wanted to hard code it, it would be as simple as changing this from dynamic to set a value. And we'd have to confirm that change. And then we could hard code in a value here. Then we would just save that change. And now we have our inputs configured. And for outputs, we don't have any defined here, but we could define custom outputs if we were performing an action, for example, and wanted to get something out of that, we could define those here. But I'm gonna keep this as is, and we'll just select finish. And that will make this plugin action available to our copilot. Now we see it's showing up here under our plugin actions section, and it can take a few minutes for this to become available to the copilot. So I would give it a few minutes before you start testing it just to make sure that everything has propagated through. But with the magic of editing, we've had time, we can see if this plugin action works. So now in our test pane here, I can ask what is the current weather? 
And you see now it's responded back asking me the location. So that's that input property that this plugin is expecting. So I can put in the location here. So I want Tulsa, Oklahoma. And there you go. It's got the weather for me using that plugin action. So there you go. That was a brief overview of what you can do with plugin actions inside of Copilot Studio. If you want to see more on plugin actions, like how to use these with custom connectors or power automate flows, drop a note in the comments and let me know. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor and support the channel by clicking that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.